Okay, so what I want to talk about today is the use of Audacity in conjunction with Format Factory or any other audio converting tool to record lectures and to edit lectures. So one of the most simplest technology that we have implemented so far, I think, and that have proven really, really useful is podcasting. It's, uh, I think, one of the easiest technologies I've come across and it's extremely efficient. We have done some research a while ago, a few years ago. Um, I don't think anybody of you were part of the, um, that, those pilots, but students were extremely happy with the podcast and they have been used to a large extent, extent in particular in difficult subjects, content heavy, theoretical subjects, and in particular by students whose first language is not English. They have given us over and over and over the feedback that, you know, they love it because they can listen to it over and over again. It's like the lecturer sitting next to them, telling them over and over, explaining over and over again these difficult concepts that they're often too shy to ask in class about or to raise their hand and say, I still haven't gotten it. And with the podcast, they can actually straight after the lecture as, as long as you make them available really quickly. So that's one of those technologies, quick and dirty. Don't waste time editing, don't waste time beautifying. You can do it, you can cut it up in your, you know, and offer it in smaller chunks. But offer the dirty file immediately after the lecture. That's some of the feedback we got from the students. The quicker they get it, because they want to listen to it straight after the lecture, mm -hmm. ideally. Now, they will use it also a lot for revision, but a lot of them also use it straight after the lecture just to listen to your lecture again. And as Dylan said, they listen it, you know, they listen through the cell phones. But often, although we always think it's such a mobile technology, you know, you think podcast, you think they listen on the bus, you know, actually what they used it most often for is their normal study space. So if they usually learn in a computer lab, that's where they would listen to it because they take notes. So they do something while they listen to it. They don't just listen. They want their notes there and they want to take notes and they want to highlight and to write their comments. So it's that idea that podcasting leads to passive learning and it's actually, we found it wasn't really true for our students. They were actually telling us they sit at their desk, they listen, they take notes, they underline, they highlight, they do something while they listen. It's not just that passive. I don't know what your um, feedback from your students are with your screencasts, but from mm. what we heard from our students is that they're actually quite actively involved when they listen to these mm. podcasts. And they listen to these podcasts up to five times. We asked them in a survey, you know, so we had in total, I think about 80% of all the students had used or had listened to some of the podcast. And we had crazy figures like 40, 50% in some courses who had listened to all podcasts and more than three times. Those were the really difficult subjects where a large part of the students actually listen to those podcasts quite often until they get it. So that's something, and it's so easy. So basically all it is, if you've got a cell phone that records your voice, or if you have a little recording device because you're doing research and focus group discussion, whatever, take that phone, and every phone has already a pre-installed recording app. In my case, it's called, I can't tell you, it's called, um, I think, voice recorder. Voice recorder. Mm -hmm. huh? It's a little icon, voice recorder. But I'm sure you find that on your phone somewhere. Mm -hmm. And all you do is, before you start lecturing, and ideally, I mean, if you sit, it's fine, you can have it here, but if you walk around... Ideally, you'll have a little pouch and you hang, you know, you, you keep your phone somewhere so your voice can be captured. You, you might have to experiment a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some people have that mic, that lapel mic that they put on their, you know, on their sweatshirt or whatever to have a mic close to your voice. But usually these phones are actually okay. You don't really need an extra mic as long as you keep it somewhere closed. You know, those conference bags, I've seen people use that. So... You can be creative. You just need your phone close by and it has to be fully charged. And ideally you have an extra battery pack in case it um, it gets finished, the battery. But then all you do is really you record your voice while you lecture. Again, you could pause when people are discussing. You could cut it out at the later stage. You can, might think that those discussions are actually quite useful, you know, as part of the podcast. It's up to you. So people have different opinions. Some people just record their own.
20 minutes as we did with Dylan, you know, we recorded his first 50 minutes, the introduction, and that was it. Others record the whole lecture. You know, it, others do summaries of lectures at the end and share that with the students. Others give feedback on assignments via podcast. The, the, the possibilities are endless. But the most simple thing is you start lecturing and you press on your recording button, on that big red button, and you record yourself. It's awkward because, as Desiree said, we all don't like our voices. Mm -hmm. And um, it's often quite interesting if you listen to yourself because of all your mannerism. You know, I, use, I, I keep saying, do you get what I mean? You know, and I hear that when I listen to my own recordings, I say that at least five times in a lecture. So, you know, you learn a lot about your own teaching style. And when we did the research project about podcasting, one of the kind of unintended outcomes was that the lecturer said they actually learned a lot about their own teaching style. And they learned that they had maybe to change the M's and the arms. And, you know, there are things that you realize you pick up or they, they thought maybe that I didn't explain so well. Or maybe that I could have done better. Or maybe here I was maybe a bit too fast. Or maybe here I was a bit too slow. You know, by listening to yourself, you learn a lot. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. But it's, it's also a really good learning opportunity, not just for the students, but also for yourself. So the way it works, you record yourself. And then when you're done, you press stop. And now that audio file is somewhere saved, you'll have to check where you save it on your phone. And you'll also have to check what format it's saved on. Because then what you do, you wake up your computer. And um, in my case, um, it is saved under sounds. But again, I mean, that is, it might be different for, you'll just have to experiment a bit and see where it saves it. In my case, it saves these recordings under a folder that called, that's called Sounds. Um, and if I open this, I can see the Samba Voice 007. That's the one I've just created. And if you see, it's a bit an awkward file format. Yeah, It's M4A. I don't know why Samsung saves it under this format. And this is why the first thing you will need is to copy this file somehow from your phone, you know, onto your desktop or wherever. Yeah, it's here. And then I open um, Format Factory or any other converting tool, Real Player or whatever. And I add this file into here. And I convert it into an MP3 file. The only reason why I do this is because Audacity, if I want to get a file into Audacity to edit it, it will only recognize MP3 files. So whatever f weird format you get from your phone, Format Factory, Real Player, any of these tools will help you convert it into MP3 format, which you need for your Fodacity. So I, I, I say OK and then start. And I can see. <laughs> And it will save it wherever you had saved your original file. So somewhere here, here, voice 007, this is not a converted one. This should be an MP3. Yeah, you can see this was the original one, M4A, whatever file format that is. And this is now the one I want to work with. So I can rename it so it's easier for me to find. You can see this was my lecture on podcasting. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, just so for you to find it. And then the next step is you open Audacity. Audacity is very similar to Movie Maker. It has the same functionality as with videos. If you want to edit videos, you go to Movie Maker. If you want to edit audio files only, you go to Audacity. Again, it's a free software. You've all installed it. And in there, you can either record. Oh, sorry. You can either record yourself. Yeah. So Audacity is a recording it's an audio recording software. So it has all the tools you need to record yourself. It has a big red button, same as on your phone. So if you want to prepare um, a recording before class, you see that your laptop, you can actually use Audacity. So you just say, you know, press the red record button and it will record you and you stop. And then, you, you know, press the red record button and it will record you and you stop. Or, as in our case, we don't want to actually record ourselves. We have recorded ourselves on, with our phones. Yeah? 
But now what we want to do, we want to import this audio file to be able to edit it. Yeah? Is this still... Do you get what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so I will choose import audio and I'll go to my desktop because this is where I saved it. We called it what? Lecture on podcasting or something? Here. Yeah? yeah? Lecture on podcasting. And there. It's there. I can cut this one, the one that I have recorded first. I can just delete it, the track. And this is now what we had. And you press before. on your recording button, on that big red button, and you record yourself. Yeah, that's my lecture. Now, as Dylan said, if there's things in there that you don't want, if there are people who, you know, students who discussed for 10 minutes, or you did a group, you gave them time for group discussions or whatever, and it's just loud and noisy, you'd see that. I mean, when you've worked with Audacity a while, you'll see these frequencies changing, and it will be very easy for you to spot where suddenly there's a lot of noise, or where suddenly, you know, there's silence or something. You have a question? Yeah. If you record yourself in yes. this uh -huh. message, yeah. you have to then uh, change the format for Yeah, what what it, what I will talk about this. So as long as you're in Audacity, you work on what what they call an Audacity project file. So it's the Audacity format. Which is not it's not universal. You can't play it everywhere. So you'll have once you're done with everything, you'll export it as an MP3 file and that mp3 file then you can share with your students and it can be you know listened to with any um, audio player that you choose to have so in audacity again it's a little bit of playing around with it but basically the two main function in audacity is either a selection tool if you want to cut some you want to select something to cut it or the time shift tool if you want to move it around and say you want to add a little bit of introduction at the beginning or you want to add music at the beginning so you shift the audio back and forth but the most important thing for you i guess will be the selection tool so for example say i want to delete the beginning i select the beginning and i cut it yeah and i have deleted whatever noise there was at the beginning or whatever i didn't want in here yeah Again, there's a little bit of playing around, but if you want, I could, you know, I can delete a whole chunk of, you know, I'll just have to listen to it, and then I decide between 35 and 45, we were discussing things I want to cut out. So then you would just cut it out. But it takes time, and this is why I say quick and dirty is often better than spending hours and hours and editing this thing, you know, I'd rather just make it available to the students. But if there's, for example, Maybe there's confidential information. Maybe there's a question that you actually don't want to share. You know, it was okay to discuss it in class, but you don't want it to go on Blackboard. You know, so you might have to cut it out. So then you have, maybe you can take a note, you, you know, around 25 minutes, so you don't have to listen to the whole hour. But you know, between 25 minutes and 28 minutes, we discussed something I need to remove. And then you just check, you know, up here, this is one minute. You can zoom in and zoom out. And you can look for 25, you know, at 25 minutes and just select those three minutes and cut it. So often taking those little notes during your class saves a lot of time later, rather than you having to listen to a whole hour of lecture and finding those three minutes where you had a discussion. If you just make a quick note while you're teaching and you see, okay, it's 25 minutes or whatever, and this is where I need to do something that helps. But once you're done editing, you'll, you save your file, save your project. Right now, we're still in project mode. Same in Movie Maker. As long as you work in Movie Maker, you're in project mode. That Movie Maker file, if you send it to somebody, they won't be able to do anything with it unless they also have Movie Maker installed. So you have to save it as a Windows Movie file or whatever, some movie format that can be shared and that can be viewed across platforms. Same here in Audacity. As long as you work and you edit and you play around with, you're in project mode. Then when you're done, when, I, when, when you've saved your project, yeah, let me call it podcast, project, yeah, when you're done, and this is now where you have to install LAME, unfortunately. So LAME, you only install it once, and LAME allows you then to export 
this Audacity project files into an MP3 format. So you go to export so, audio, so you don't no, save. So if, you, if you can store blame, it, you will it's automatic. Audacity, yes, no, it's automatic. Save for audacity, yeah, no. exactly. You'll never have to open them or anything. It yeah. finds it automatically okay. that it's installed and now it can export. Yeah. But if you don't have blame, if you try to export it, we say it can't find blame file. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Okay. So then you know you have to install the blame. So you export podcast project, whatever, you can see as an mp3 file, it already suggests that and you save. Yeah, it takes a while. I had deja vu when I saw those words just now and I said, sure, I worked with this a while ago, then I remember three years ago I visited my sister and I recorded the parrot. And whenever the parrot was quiet, I took those quiet parts out. You can hear the parrot. <laughs> <laughs> so here this is I think my podcast project as an mp3 file this is the stuff that I have um, edited in and they're tiny you know they're really really small this, yeah okay still setting up but these are tiny tiny files so compared to screencast it becomes quite big and you need actually a proper screen to watch it these podcasts are megabytes, you know, a few megabytes that people can very easily share via Bluetooth, on their mm -hmm. phones, you know, it's extremely, I mean, in terms of social justice, you know, and equitable access, I think podcasting is one of the most socially just technologies that we have introduced mm -hmm. at the university, because it's really, really student-friendly. This, this has been one of the most useful opportunities. Well, I'm happy. So I'm going to stop now the recording. Let's see if it works. Hello? Where's my recording?